on this first screen, we can run the process. Once we hit that button, it can't be used for anything else. We can stop the process, or we can momentarily run the process with a jog button. As long as we hold the button down, the process runs. There's also a status message over here that shows the current status of the system. It says running or stopped. Clearly, all four of these things are related somehow. Let's see how that works. If we go to screen one, all the things we're interested in are dimmed out and we can't access them. That's because they're actually on a background screen. We'll discuss why that is in the video on using the shift keys, but for now, know that all those objects are actually down here on screen 15. If we double click on the run button, we can see that it's a bitmap button. This is so the user can use his own graphics for the button. This button is controlling the run tag, and it's also using that same tag to drive the graphic indicator of the button. This is how you get a push button action, but with a graphical indicator by using the same tag for both. Here's the key right here though. It's using the set on action. That way once the run button is pressed, it can't be unpressed. Something else has to change that tag back to off. Now if we look at the jog button, it's the exact same thing but different graphics and it's set to a momentary action. So when it's released, it sets the tag back to off. The stop button is exactly the same as the run button except it's using the set off action. So once it's set off, it can't be unset. The tag has to be modified by something else like the run button to set it back to on. And this is a dynamic bitmap, which changes states between these two graphics as a function of the run tag. So now we see how all four of these objects work together. When we press run, it modifies this run tag to on. This dynamic bitmap is watching that tag and it changes accordingly. When we hit stop, it changes that tag back to off, and this dynamic bitmap sees that and changes the bitmap. Down here we have a speed control where we can adjust the speed of the process. Let's see how that works. Looks like we have a static bitmap here for the numbers. An outline. A white box. A graphic and an increment decrement operator. Set to increment only right here instead of an increment decrement. It chooses one operation. We choose it to be an increment op operation and it's going to increment the speed tag. We hit control Z to put all those things back where we found them. Down at the other end, again, we have another bitmap, just arrows, sitting on top of another increment decrement operator, which we set to the decrement operation. Note that these increment and decrement operators are set to increment and decrement by 10. So this is important to note. Graphics, like this one, can be placed on top of objects, but the object still operates as expected. If we go back to our simulator, even though this graphic is sitting on top of an increment decrement operator, the decrement and increment operators still function. That's great because it really opens up your options on what you can display on the screen. We use that feature again down below here on the function keys. These are just screen change buttons with graphics sitting on top of them. We'll discuss those more in a later video on the shift key, but you can see real quick if I look at it, come back up here to screen one, these are just graphics sitting on top of screen change push buttons. In the next video, we'll cover the fans and light screens behind this button right here. Well, that's it for this video. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series, and as always, please send us any topics you would like to see covered, or any other comments for that matter. We appreciate the feedback.